written word comes from the Kanara, which is a holy book within Sikhism. Here are these words. Now I am jealous of no one, now that I have attained unto the society of the saints. I am estranged with no one, nor is anyone a stranger to me. Indeed, I am the friend of all. All that God does, with that I am pleased. This is the wisdom I have received from the saints. Yea, the one God pervades all, and seeing him, I am holy in bloom. Long ago, in many ways and places, God spoke to our ancestors. God is still speaking. officially, in any capacity, as an intern. Maybe somebody can invite me later. Mm -hmm. He can come back. But, because I really have enjoyed my time with your congregation. And um, it's important that I, I, I thank you for helping me to stand in my truth. Um, part of being an intern is really to define, sort of try to figure out what your future ministry will look like. Um, and... For me, I am a misfit for most things. Um, and I'm a misfit for this community. But you have been here for me and allowed me to be here for you and really showed me that there are ways in which that misfit can be targeted, spot on, perfect for someone, which was my goal, um, to figure out how to talk to people in those spaces. The people who find themselves uh, misfits. I usually don't roam. Uh, it's usually not my thing. But part of that is also that standing in my truth, show, showing up as a servant leader of God is important for some people. There are many people who are going to be told that they're somehow unworthy of God's love. They're not going to understand how a woman, someone who's African American, um, somewhat youngish, um, <laughs> could stand up in front of them and tell them anything. Um, and that that would be acceptable and that they are accepting. And as much as I would like to say that me saying that to them as Anya is enough, for some people they've heard that they're not worthy for so long that I would need to show up road as Reverend Phillips Thomas for that message to begin to sink in. So, some of you might be wondering why I titled this sermon Showing Up, Reaching Out, IRT. Some of the younger people who are more tech savvy probably know exactly what that means. Does anybody know what that means? IRT? IRL. So in real time, in real life, right? Um, so I plan to leave here and go on to make media. But I'm encouraging people not to rest in digital connection, but to, to get out there, to reach out in real life to real people. And part of that there is a greater ask because I'm going to ask folk like you to reach back. They're going to have to know that whatever work we're doing, whatever we're promising, that love that we're telling them is there, is in fact there. And when they begin to show up, because God willing, the Spirit will bring them here, you will be reaching back. So I'm going to tell you a story. So when I first started school, um, I was pretty overwhelmed. I couldn't really quite uh, get a handle on what it was like to be a mother and a wife and go, to, go back to school and just the ridiculous amount of work. And I have a good friend, she's lovely, we have a pact to go see some of the world's worst movies together. 
<laughs> um, she invited me out to see this movie. Um, it's called Table 19. It's awful. <laughs> um, I think I had papers or something. Whatever it was, I was not able to show up to see this terrible movie with her. Some of it was because I was thinking, the movie is going to be terrible. So if I don't go and write this paper instead, that'll be fine. But there was that um, difficulty of not going to meet a friend because rarely were we calling each other to go see a movie when it was about the movie. I mean, I'm, they are terrible, many of them. So it's never about the movie. But I couldn't do it. So, I'm a year later in school, trying to figure out this call to create media and why it might be important and whether or not there's truly a space for this, you know, to create some sort of progressive, liberal, religious, spiritual media, whatever that means, this network, what that means. Um, because it's evangelical, that makes me feel nervous to even say that out loud, me in a white room saying evangelical. <laughs> Practicing, you know, elevator pitches for the higher power is usually not what makes me comfortable. But, you know, every day I get up because love is going to win this battle. So in theory, it's simple. The model has functioned really well for 70 years for some people, and it has been very fruitful. Um, and in fact, in conservative media, it's very robust. Um, so much so that they're actually also interested in this middle ground space. Um, they're going to have to be taught how to get there. Probably going to have to help them. So in fact, okay, so hold on to your seats because I'm going to stand up here and quote Billy Graham. Just so you know. <laughs> just warning you. I'm quoting Billy Graham and then I'm going to ask you to stand up and do some participatory activities. And get out of control. But I'm leaving. So, <laughs> that's that. So he says, um, for those of you who don't know, Billy Graham is a huge minister, um, basically invented televangelism, um, and he's a, a leader in conservative religious media. But he says it's important that the church use technology to make a statement in the midst of chaos, empty, emptiness, and despair. There is hope, he went on to add. He went on to add. Um, in the life of Jesus Christ, which I agree with. But I also, for me, would like to add on a few other world religions that have quite a bit to offer. Maybe not to everyone, but to someone. And for me, that'll be enough. And hopefully for that other person, that'll be enough. Okay. So the three-channel black and white medium that used to stop broadcasting at midnight, many people were in this room were not even aware that there was such a thing, um, is now this 15 billion channel full spectrum universe, right? We carry it around in our pockets. They're all day. We go to sleep with them. We wake up with them. When I first got married, I used to joke that my husband's um, smartphone was an early mistress. <laughs> um, you know, digital media announces every incident in theory, and it's updated continuously. Except for sometimes it's not. Uh, think of all the things that you would struggle to post or announce or to share, but that are with you. So let me go back to Billy Graham. So he finishes with, we live on a diet of up to the minute news, 15 minute celebrities, while we ache for a transcendent, timeless touch. This was in 1998 at a media conference. So the information age, you know, it could go down as a period of history where our culture has forgotten this important thing. Uh, even as we embrace the power and grow into it, but that we could be offering a transcendent, timeless touch to people's lives. So it might sound odd that I'm quoting Billy Graham. It feels odd. Although... I admire him in many ways. We have slightly different missions. Okay, some of those really different. Some of those people that I said that it is important for me to robe for are some of the very people 
it's important for me to roll for. I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, but I think in his core, he wants to spread love. I think in my core, I want to spread love. So, but these messages of hope and connection, that's the work. He's doing the work. I'm doing the work. If I can be one quarter as successful as he is in reaching people to know how valuable, how beloved they are, that they have a place in this world, and that people care for them. So, my friend, when she invited me to this movie, I hadn't seen it. She had actually reached out to me in real, real time to go see this movie. I didn't go see this terrible movie because it was terrible. I did go see it on a plane, on one of those tiny screens, digitally. It was bad, but I was a captive audience. And so, I sort of ignored it the first time through, but I was on the plane long enough for it to come back around. <laughs> and so I watched it the second time around, and I got the message of this movie. It's not the message of the movie, but it is really the movie if you're paying attention. It's supposed to be a rom-com. There's nothing romantic about it, except for the relationships that people build with each other. And it's got all, it everything in this movie. It's got love, life, divorce, illness, unhappiness, happiness, it's, it's all there. But it begins with these misfits, these people who receive a piece of mail, something that feels loving, something that invites them out, and they go. The thing that's interesting is about what's said about these people. They were supposed to be the people who had enough sense to know that they should have RSVP no. It had already been predecided that you're unworthy actually to come be in our presence. They didn't know this. But they received this message. They answered it, showed up, sat at this table together, and discussed their misfit status amongst each other. They couldn't really come to agreement about what it meant to be there together. And they didn't really come to an agreement about who they were. But as the time went on, they got more and more honest with each other because they noticed that they could see things about one another. That they were okay with what they saw, that they were willing to help with what they saw, and ultimately in the end, they were willing to love each other. It's a beautiful message of hope and joy. I am not quite sure that I can really come up with a better one. And while I wished that I had gone to see with my friend to talk about whatever was going on with her, the thing about it was the digital space had got me. It got me. I sat in the chair, it was bothering, it was rotating, it came again and again, and it got me. And I heard it. I heard the message. And now I'm here with you, sharing the message with you, and I'm going to call my friend, and we're going to go see another terrible movie. <laughs> the important thing about this misfit status is that in some way, shape, or form, we're all going to be misfits. If we leave our house and go more than 10 miles away from it in any direction, we're probably going to be a little bit misfit there. That's just the way it is. What's important, though, is that we should be able to stand with each other. To know that if somebody is reaching out towards you, that they will see you. That they will take your hand and that they will support you. So this is going to sound terrible and great at the same time. I would like to have everybody who is willing to join in at table 19, right here in the center. We're going to be misfits. We're going to practice reaching out together. I know that sounds terrible, admitting to being a misfit. So I'll admit it first. So I'm a Unitarian Universalist. Let's just start with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Texas. Love it, right? Um, I wish I had a truck. I wish I were wearing boots right now. I do. I'm African American. I'm a female. I have the mother of two. I'm, a, I'm married. Those are all misfit statuses in communities that I am a member of right now. It is disparate when I switch groups of friends. I live in New England. I live down the street. I need to prune my bushes. Okay. So it can be as simple as that. 
So let's start with one. It's really easy. So you've all been invited. I've issued the invitation. You can answer it if you'd like. So here's an easy one. I have been stressed out by Christmas. No? No one's been stressed out by Christmas? No? No, serious. Tell me about if you've been stressed out by Christmas. Yeah, come on. No. <laughs> okay, so we just, all so just women. So you got it. Okay, so there you go. So I have graduated from high school. No. Okay. <laughs> you graduated from high school. Yeah. I have seen the sun shining. I feel hot. Okay? Alright. I'm wearing glasses. I'm not wearing glasses. <laughs> so now we'll have something slightly harder than that, right? I've been stressed out by a test. I've been stressed out by a test. Anyone else? Okay. Grab a hand of someone who's been stressed out by a test. Just grab their hand. There's plenty of people. Okay. So hold on to that person until now. Okay? I've been pleased by a grade I got on the test. Anyone? And, and even if you, you haven't experienced that, would you be willing to take that person's hand? Would you? Okay, well then take it. If you're willing to take it, take it. Okay? I've been married. You can switch it up if it needs to be. Yes, you can change. You, the whole room is, is your oyster. You can move about. You can make an octopus. Yeah. <laughs> I've lost a game. I feel that. I or somebody I know has been very sick. If someone puts their hand up, grab it. We're just going to keep reaching, and if you have to let go, make eye contact, let them know that you know, and then grab that other person's hand. What we don't want to do is leave somebody alone. Okay. I have moved far away from home. This may require walking across yes, the room. Yes, walking, movement. If you see someone who's done and you've had to, they've had to let go, go and uh, be with them. Yeah. You can stand right there. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. It's totally fine. I've lost my grandmother. She's passed away. I started a new job. <laughs> I've ever lost a job. Yeah. I have felt sad. I felt sad. And oddly enough, I felt joy. <laughs> so here's the thing. Studies have shown that with issues of trauma, all of these, oddly enough, are elements of trauma. They're part of the human experience. What it takes for someone to survive is one person reaching towards them. This is our gift. This is what I'm seeking to do in the world, to build this kind of network where the digital space will lead us to the real life, where we will be reaching towards each other, to be with each other. And I thank you all for helping me to get there. Amen. And so for you, I say amen and asha. Thank you. Amen.
Thank you, Anya. 